they're surrounded, this region where if you fall in, it's called the event horizon. And if you go across that horizon, then you are going to the center. There's one way of thinking about it, which is quite cool, which is that uh, the time and space sort of flip is one way to think about it. So in the same way that we are going into the future now, so, so we're going to tomorrow. There's nothing we can do about it. We are going to tomorrow. Um, in the same way, if you fall in across the event horizon of a black hole, you are going to the middle, the singularity it's called. So that's, that's your future. Every, every line of your future points to the center of the black hole. So it's kind of the ultimate of no escape, the ultimate prison. You're going to get squashed to an infinitely dense. Imagine you are standing near the edge of a black hole, watching as matter and light are sucked into its abyss. You might think that nothing can escape from this cosmic monster, not even a single photon. But what if I told you that black holes are not as black as they seem? What if I told you that black holes can actually emit radiation and lose mass over time? And what if I told you that this process is not limited to black holes, but can happen to any object with mass in the universe? Sounds crazy, right? Well, this is what a new study suggests, based on a theory called Hawking radiation. In this video, we will explore what Hawking radiation is, how it works, and what it means for the fate of black holes and everything else in our universe. So buckle up and get ready for a mind-blowing journey into the quantum realm of gravity. Hawking radiation is named after the famous physicist Stephen Hawking, who proposed it in 1974. He was trying to solve a puzzle that arose from combining two of the most successful theories in physics, general relativity and quantum mechanics. General relativity describes how gravity works on large scales, such as in stars and galaxies. Quantum mechanics describes how matter and energy behave on small scales, such as atoms and photons. Both theories have been tested and confirmed by many experiments, but they are incompatible with each other. One of the places where this conflict becomes apparent is near the event horizon of a black hole. The event horizon is the point of no return for anything that falls into a black hole. According to general relativity, nothing can escape from beyond the event horizon, not even light. This means that black holes are perfectly black and have no temperature. However, according to quantum mechanics, empty space is not really empty. It is filled with fluctuations of quantum fields that create pairs of particles and antiparticles out of nothing. These pairs usually annihilate each other quickly and return to the vacuum. But near the event horizon, something different can happen. One member of the pair can fall into the black hole, while the other can escape to infinity. This means that black holes can emit radiation and have a temperature. This radiation is called Hawking radiation. Hawking radiation was a revolutionary idea that showed that quantum effects can influence gravity, and vice versa. It also showed that black holes are not static and eternal, but dynamic and finite. However, Hawking radiation was not proven experimentally or theoretically. It was based on a semi-classical approach, where gravity was treated classically while matter was treated quantum mechanically. This approach can lead to some inconsistencies and paradoxes that we will discuss later. Yeah, when you look at Einstein's equations, right in his mathematics, there's a little formula that you can see where it says if you have any mass m, whatever mass you want, and you squeeze it into a radius r that's less than 2 times Newton's constant 2g times m divided by c squared, speed of light squared, a formula, details don't matter, but you take any mass, if the radius within which that mass sits is less than 2g m over c squared, it is a black hole, period, end of story, according to Einstein. Now, Einstein left out quantum mechanics. Weirdly, right? Because his Nobel Prize was for quantum mechanics. It was for a paper he wrote in 1905 about the photoelectric effect, but he never really believed that quantum mechanics was the true description of the world. And when he was developing the general theory of relativity, he was just thinking about gravity and not quantum mechanics. Stephen Hawking came along in 1974 and started to inject quantum mechanics into our understanding of things like black holes. And that's where Hawking proved that black holes are not completely black. He showed that black holes allow a certain amount of radiation to leak out of their surface, leak out of the event horizon, or leak out from just beyond the edge of the event horizon. And so, yes, when you think about black holes, as far as we can tell, they are a fundamental quality of the world, but you have to include quantum physics to truly understand them, and that's the cutting edge of what's happening right now.
Hawking radiation is very faint and hard to detect. It depends on the mass and size of the black hole. The smaller and lighter the black hole, the hotter and brighter it is. This is because the event horizon becomes closer to the singularity, where gravity is extremely strong and quantum effects are more pronounced. Hawking radiation also depends on the type of particles that are emitted. Some particles are more likely to escape than others, depending on their spin and charge. For example, photons and neutrinos are more likely to escape than electrons and protons. Hawking radiation also has some strange properties that defy our intuition. For instance, it does not depend on what falls into the black hole. It only depends on the mass, charge, and spin of the black hole itself. This means that all black holes of the same type look alike to an outside observer. This is known as the no-hair theorem. Another property is that Hawking radiation does not carry any information about what is inside the black hole. It is completely random and thermal. This means that any information that falls into the black hole is lost forever. This is known as the information paradox. There are different ways to understand how Hawking radiation works without invoking virtual particles. One way is to use the concept of quantum tunneling, where quantum objects can escape from a potential barrier that is normally too high for them. Another way is to use the concept of Unruh radiation, where an accelerating observer sees a thermal bath of particles in empty space. Both ways can give the same result as Hawking's original calculation, but they also have their own limitations and assumptions. One of the challenges of understanding Hawking radiation is that it requires a theory that can combine quantum mechanics and gravity in a consistent way. Such a theory is called quantum gravity, and it is one of the holy grails of physics. However, we do not have a complete and accepted theory of quantum gravity yet. There are some candidates, such as string theory and loop quantum gravity, but they are still under development and have not been fully tested. Therefore, Hawking radiation remains a theoretical prediction that has not been confirmed or refuted by observation or experiment. There are some profound implications that Hawking radiation has for the fate of black holes and the universe. Since black holes emit radiation, they also lose mass and energy over time. This means that black holes can shrink and evaporate completely in a final burst of radiation. The time it takes for a black hole to evaporate depends on its initial mass. For example, a black hole with the mass of the sun would take about 10 to the power of 67 years to evaporate, which is much longer than the age of the universe. However, a micro black hole with the mass of a car would take only about 10 to the power of negative 23 seconds to evaporate. The evaporation of black holes raises some interesting questions about what happens to the matter and information that falls into them. According to quantum mechanics, information cannot be destroyed or created, only transformed or transferred. But according to general relativity, information cannot escape from beyond the event horizon. So where does it go? Does it disappear with the black hole? Does it leak out with the Hawking radiation? Does it remain hidden in a remnant or a baby universe? These are some of the puzzles that physicists are still trying to solve. Another implication of Hawking radiation is that it could affect the origin and destiny of the universe. Some physicists have speculated that Hawking radiation could explain how the universe came into being from a quantum fluctuation, or how it could end in a heat death due to the evaporation of all matter. However, these scenarios are highly speculative and depend on many assumptions and uncertainties. One of the ways to test Hawking radiation is to look for evidence of primordial black holes, which are hypothetical black holes that formed in the early stages of the universe. These black holes could have masses ranging from subatomic particles to planets, and they could be evaporating today, producing detectable signals of gamma rays or gravitational waves. However, so far no conclusive observation of primordial black holes has been made. Another way to test Hawking radiation is to create artificial black holes in particle accelerators or laser facilities. These black holes would be very small and short-lived, but they could emit Hawking radiation that could be measured by detectors. However, this is also very challenging and controversial, as some people fear that such experiments could pose a risk to the safety of the planet. In conclusion, Hawking radiation is one of the most fascinating and mysterious phenomena in physics. It reveals the connection between quantum mechanics and gravity, 
and challenges our understanding of black holes and the universe. It also opens up new possibilities for exploring the nature of reality and the origin of everything. In this video, we have learned what Hawking radiation is, how it works, and what it means for the fate of black holes and everything else. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest news and discoveries in science. Thank you for watching and see you next time.